I don't know what cloud your judgment worse. Your guilt or your antiquated sense of morality. Bruce, I forgive you for not saving me. Robin is always a mantle that is thought of as a little beacon of hope. Robin is Batman's sidekick through and through, one of the people he can rely on in his time of need. And when in danger, someone Batman can be relied on to save. Or so it goes some of the time. As time has gone on and DC's multiverse has expanded, we've also been introduced to versions of Robin who are the polar opposite to this, or have a more dark and tragic backstory, or fate, than those we're used to seeing. Welcome back Nerd Squad, it is time once again to venture into some of the darklit alternate realities that the DC multiverse stands to offer as we count down the top 10 dark alternate versions of Robin. For this video, we're going to be leaving it open to all iterations of Robin and maybe even some that only exist in alternate timelines and realities. If you love dark alternate versions of characters, click on over here to check out our dark alternate versions playlist. And be sure to stick around to the end of this list where I will have some bonus content coming your way in the form of comment responses. All right, now let's get counting. Number Number 10, All-Star Robin. This version of Robin is pretty dark in the sense of how poorly he is treated by Batman. Because in the All-Star Batman and Robin, the Boy Wonder series, Batman and eventually Robin are kind of both huge jerks. Bruce Wayne ends up taking in Dick Grayson after the tragic and violent death of his parents. However, instead of showing some empathy for a kid who went through something similar to the trauma a young Bruce Wayne suffered through, he snaps Dick out of his state of shock and refuses to let him grieve, asking him instead to join Bruce in a mission of vengeance. Shortly after bringing Dick to the Batcave, Batman leaves him alone there. When he inquires for food as well, he is told he must hunt the rats of the cave and sleep on the cold cave floor instead of being offered a bed in the manor. Dick is later presented with the man responsible for his parents death, who it seems like he almost might kill with an axe, but instead he simply gives him a flesh wound and then beats that guy senseless until he confesses who his employer is. Being that this is Frank Miller writing, this is obviously not your average Robin and Batman backstory and relationship. Number 9, Carrie Kelly. In the Titans Tomorrow alternate universe, so many heroes are dead. One such hero is former Robin, who we only know in this universe as someone who had a connection to Batman. We never get to learn how her demise came about. It could have been Duella Dent that was behind it, or she could have been killed by another villain, or perhaps died fighting in the crisis. All we get to see is her tombstone in the same cemetery as so many others who were attached to Batman. Basically, it seems in this reality, so many of the Robins have died, including Carrie, who we can assume joined either Bruce or the new Batman much later on in life. Number 8, Tim Drake Batman. Speaking of the other Batman, also from the Titans Tomorrow World, is a Batman who was once Robin, Tim Drake. Tim Drake, currently part of the Teen Titans in this Teen Titans issue from 2005, confronts his future self, who he discovers has killed so many of Batman's old rogues. Older Tim Drake has adopted the mantle of Batman and explains to his younger self that one day he'll realize why he had to do it, and that one day young Tim Drake will actually do the same. Tim Drake Robin refuses to grow up to become a killer, and the two fight. All well, Tim Drake. Batman explains his plan to wipe the memory of his younger self and the other Teen Titans and send them home to ensure this future will still come to pass. Yikes. Number 7, Triss Plover. This version of Robin is mostly dark considering the alternate future she hails from. She appears in Robin Annual issue number 5 from the mid 90s. Triss works on the fields of a giant spaceship floating aimlessly in outer space due to a navigation malfunction, presumably in the far, far future when you know we have to travel around on spaceships. She works in the fields on the ship but gets in trouble with the authorities and decides to seek out Batman, inspired by him to also become a vigilante. Eventually, she joins him and gets some pretty sweet rocket boots while fighting alongside him. Batman reveals to her that they're actually on a spaceship and that it isn't moving, but the government is trying to cover basically all of this up. They eventually locate the computer and fix the navigation issues, but when Triss learns that it will take 300 years to get to the hospitable planet's coordinates, she willingly gives herself up to the authorities and is turned into fertilizer. Number 6. Earth 43. This Dick Grayson of Earth 43 used to be a vampire hunter, but ended up joining Batman as a member of the Legion of the Undead as a vampire. Bruce himself was turned into a vampire, one who in this reality killed Dick Grayson's parents. Seeking vengeance, Dick plots to end Batman's vampiric reign of terror, killing him. But he is bitten by the beast before he can stake him. In the end, Grayson turns out just like Batman, also becoming a vampire and becoming his vampiric Robin in this universe. So we got a vampire bat and a vampire Robin. Number 5. Joker. Well, not 
really the Joker, but sort of. Actually, this version of Dick Grayson is also technically All-Star Robin. It's the same character, but just later on in the story. This Dick Grayson, by the way, created by Frank Miller, hails from Earth 31, in case anyone was wondering, which is the universe that both All-Star Batman and Robin and The Dark Knight Strikes Again belong to. But despite being the same character, he has become so much more dark at this point that I had to split both versions of him up into two points. I just felt it made the most sense. Just because younger Dick Grayson in this reality is so different from older Dick Grayson. In Dark Knight Strikes Again, we learned that after Dick was fired as Robin for incompetence by Batman, he allowed himself to be experimented on and was granted powers as a result. He was given regeneration and shape-shifting powers but also lost his sanity in the process. Oh no! Aiming to get back at Batman, he became the new Joker in order to torment him. So he's sort of the Joker, but he's also still Robin. Number 4. Damian Wayne as Nightwing in Injustice, we get a version of Damien who is still Robin, but no longer Batman's Robin. This version of Damien Wayne instead grew up to fight alongside the tyrant version of Superman in the Injustice reality. He also accidentally killed Dick Grayson and made himself Nightwing. This version of Damien is also no longer reformed in the same way he has been in the main continuity. He's not against killing and will do so when necessary, making him a pretty frightening opponent. Number 3. Almost all the Robins the Nightwing of Earth-22, in combination with so many of the other Robins from that reality, was killed by Batman as he transformed into the Batman Who Laughs. Dick wasn't the only Robin to fall in this reality. Batman killed pretty much everyone save for one of his Bat family members when he turned. He was driven insane after being pushed too far and killing the Joker, who had gone on a killing spree after discovering he only had a short amount of time left to live. After breaking the Joker's neck, some Joker toxin was released from Joker's heart, presumably which Batman then ingested, transforming him into the Batman who laughs, driving him insane and causing him to turn on anyone who would get in his way. In this case, it means killing pretty much almost all his allies and his sidekicks, which is pretty dark. Number 2. Dark Robin Dark Robin is the last surviving sidekick of the Batman who became the Batman who laughs from Earth-22, belonging to the Dark Multiverse. This Robin is Batman's son, Damian Wayne, who decided to join his father, also becoming infected with the Joker toxin and basically going insane alongside his dad. While alive, he had a horrific look about him and was armed with both claws and fangs. Those glossy eyes, though, are really what get me when it comes to this Robin. Ugh. Number 1. Robin King This version of Robin is actually also a version of Batman as well. We got a deeper look into Robin King's backstory in Dark Knight's Death Metal Legends of the Dark Knights issue number 1, shortly after his first appearance in Dark Knight's Death Metal issue number 2. We learn that this is a sociopathic version of Bruce Wayne who was basically born a killer. He had all the warning signs from a young age, torturing and killing animals, as well as tormenting the Wayne family butler, Alfred or Alfred. The young Bruce becomes the Robin King after that fateful alleyway robbery attempt, but in this version of the story, Bruce kills Joe Chill before shooting his parents himself, pretending that Chill had been the culprit, so he could get rid of his parents. Yikes. Thank you so much for watching, Nerd Squad. Who are some of your favorite alternate versions of Robin? Which do you think is the darkest? Is there anyone that we miss that you just love or are super terrified of? Let us know in the comments below. And speaking of comments, it's time to turn to some comments from one of our latest videos, Top 10 Worst Things Thanos Has Done. Sci-Fi Wire comments, aka Marvel's number one supervillain. Yo, Sci-Fi, is that you watching? I love you folks, what up? White Raven 696 writes, Worst thing Thanos ever did? He helped an old lady cross the street. Look it up, it's insane. Oh yes, that did happen. That is from the 2016 Thanos series. I personally love that series. I also love that annual issue which has that story in it with all of its little mini stories. Fun fact, did you actually know that we got a handful of short stories in the annual because Donnie Cates, who took over on the book, was contractually obligated to do the annual but was super busy with other projects at Marvel, like Venom, and suggested doing that to make it more manageable to complete? Did you know that? Cates only wrote the Titans greatest dad short story in that issue. My favorite though from that issue is Little Thanos by Katie Cook. And that's all the time we have for comments today. Be sure to comment below for a chance to have your thoughts and feels shouted out in a future video. This has been Top 10 Nerd and I'm your host Amanda McKnight reminding you to stay nerdy YouTube. It's like dust on my nose. What is this? Here we go. Hospitable. Not the hospital planet. <laughs>